Sandy says, Hello, Dutch. Do you have any stories on Bill Irwin? You worked with him and booked him in Florida. You were also in WCW together and the WWF when he was the goon. How did he even wrestle in those ridiculous tapered boots? They looked so unstable. Well, I remember him as the goon. And this was a period in WWF where they brought in a bunch of different guys at one time. They brought them in all at one time. It was the goon. I forgot who else they, but, but it was about Tracy five, Smothers, T.L. Hopper. T.L. Hopper was the plumber. Hmm. What was uh, Tracy, Tracy was Freddie Smothers. Joe Floyd? Yeah. Which he was, was there. Um, Jack and Jerry Briscoe's real names, I believe. Yeah. And they brought a couple more, but none of them got over. Do you know, the pug, do you remember Alex Porto? They brought yes. him, I don't know where he came from. And what was the pug, what's that mean? Just a pug dog, I guess. <laughs> I mean, genuinely, I think that's what it was. And, of course, uh, the goon, what was his real name? Bill Irwin. Uh, Bill Irwin. And I, I really got to know Bill fairly well when I was in Florida, when I was booking in Florida. And uh, he came in with a bullwhip. And I had the bullwhip. And I knew he had the bullwhip. I said, where did you get this bullwhip? He said, when I saw you <laughs> or something like that. So, of course, if he's got the bullwhip and I got the bullwhip, what's a natural match? It's me against him in a bullwhip match. Well, I booked the first one, and I had like a week to go. Oh, I wish I hadn't booked it. Because Bill was pretty good with it, but it hurt like hell. So I would go back to the dress room on the first night. I says, damn, you think you could hurt just a little bit? You think you could hurt me a little bit more with that bull whip? He said, well, what, what? I said, oh, brother, that, that first one you threw, oh, man. And then he'd look at my leg, and it'd be all damn cut up and all. A week of that, and I wish I'd never booked it. So, And I, I left about a month or so later. But, but Bill was a good worker, a great worker, and I still talk to him still today. I don't know where he is. I think he's back in Minnesota living up there. So, do you have a brother? Was it Scott Irwin? Brother, his brother died. Right, but he was a wrestler as well, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. And I remember when it happened. I don't know what happened to him. His brother got sick. I forgot what happened to him. But and they would go as a as a tag team with each other. I think the brother was a little bigger than Bill. So, but he passed away. Yeah, I don't think Scott really ever got over that. Well, I mean, Scott and, died. Yes. Bill didn't get over it. Uh, Scott died in 87 of a brain tumor. He was 35. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Scott ever got over I mean, Bill ever got over that. No. Yeah. So. Is that not a gimmick? Both of, both of them were good guys. Really good guys. Is that not gimmick infringement where... Bill turned up with a bullwhip like you. Well, I, I stole I stole my bullwhip too. So, <laughs> which bass, maybe, or who do you steal yours from? Well, I stole mine from uh, Ox Baker. He had a bullwhip. Well, I don't remember seeing him with Ox a Baker. Well, he, he never wore it. He never took it to the ring. He just had one, and he brought it one time. And I says, and I'm just I was just fascinated by the bullwhip and ox he looked perfect with it you know he'd get that big mustache he'd go ah. and he'd hit his hands together ah. and he would uh so he would uh i said how do you do that bullwhip so he tried to show me and i kind of got the the theory how a bullwhip worked so I said, can I, can I borrow that? He said, oh, yeah, I'll take it, you know. And I took it for a while, and I was trying to teach myself, me, I know nothing about it, but I'm trying to teach myself 
how to use the bullwhip because I'm I'm figuring, well, wait a minute. The first guy that had the bullwhip, he didn't know how it worked. So he had to figure it out. So I said, hell, I can figure that out. Oh, my God. Nobody told me you were supposed to throw it out there and wait for it to catch and let its weight kill itself. I would throw it out there and I'd pull it back. Well, pulling it back was the worst thing you could do because now it's coming back at you at almost the same speed as it had when you threw it out. And I have blistered my own ass big time with that, with that bullwhip. And it took me about, I don't know, it took me about at least a month to learn how to do it. I think Finey Ox said, you throw it out there and you wait for the speed to pop and it kills its own power. He said, if you're pulling it back before it pops, he said, it's going <laughs> to, it's going to pop. All right. But it's going <laughs> to pop on your butt. So, but I kind of taught myself how to use it. And I had a 12 footer one time I had a 10 footer, the best ones like the eight footers, you know, but you have more control over, but I've seen those guys, the experts, they get it. They could do five pops and like pow, 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 just that, that fast. So, but it's very, if you don't know what you're doing and you pull it back, it's coming right at your head too, or mine did. And I would be ducking and get, he got me on the ear one time. It was embarrassing, really. I, I wouldn't do it in front of anybody because they thought I was like a, some kind of an expert with it. And I showed that I didn't know nothing about a bullwhip. <laughs> but when I finally learned it, you know, I was, I was decent with it. Not the best, but I was just decent. 